Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I wanna show you how the Hue Sync Box can transform your viewing experience from this to this. Let's jump right in. So what do you get for your $230? Well, you get the Hue Sync Box, for a proper formal introduction, one must state the full title. Burp, burp, burp. The Philips Hue Play HDMI Sync Box. It's the heart of the burgeoning play line that's all about making your Hue lights more responsive to your media. You get an HDMI cable, a charging cable, a prong adapter, and a power adapter, with three charging ports, one for the box and two left for lights. So here's a closer look at the box. It has a bit of heft to it um, with a matte feel except on the bottom that has a soft touch rubber coating. On the front you have a state indicator light and a button for setup purposes. On the back you have four HDMI ports, an HDMI out, a micro USB port, and of course a power port. So there is a bit of sad news about this box. It does not support Dolby Vision or HDR10+. I should clarify and say that the HDRs will pass through the box, but the lights will stop syncing. When looking at the packaging, you will see that Bluetooth is supported. This might lead you to believe that you could have these spontaneous light shows being directed by your device's music. You would be wrong. The Bluetooth is only for app support. Thought I would take a few moments to show how to set up the hardware. It's easy as you might think. First, plug an HDMI cable into the streaming box, game console, whatever. And second, plug the other end of the HDMI cable into one of the four HDMI inputs on the back of the sync box. Third, plug in an HDMI cable into the HDMI out port on the sync box. The other end of that cable is plugged into a TV. Find a TV somewhere. Even if you have a smart TV, you will need to use an external video source to get the light effect. Annoying, I know. So before we dig more to the setup process, I thought I would show a simple example of how the Hue box coordinates lights with the video signal. Largely, it's what you would expect. When the screen is dark, the lights are dim. When the screen lights up, lights increase intensity. When the right side of the screen is dark, the lights on the right side dim. When the right or left side of the screen changes color, the lights on the respective sides follow suit. Here you can see that the star thing in the center of the screen is evoking the center lights and catching the right color. The lights also follow this ball moving from left to right and nicely captures the movement and mood of the sunset. The lights I'm using for this demo include two play light bars, five white and color ambience bulbs, the small one in a lamp and the remaining four in the ceiling. The last three are go portables. So very often close-ups are not pretty you can get a sense of how I place my lights. In short, I have two shelf levels, both behind where the TV will go. One shelf will be above the TV and the other at TV center height. Oh, the cord horror. I'm feeling vulnerable. Bulbs are mostly at ceiling height, a little in front of where the TV will sit. Now erase your memory of all the unsightly stuff. All right, so let's say you've connected a streaming box or gaming console to the Hue Sync box and you've connected the Sync box to the TV and you've positioned your lights around the TV. You are now ready to create an entertainment area. Why would I utter such an awful phrase? The Sync box needs to know which lights to control, where those lights are relative to the TV. Creating an entertainment area gives the Sync box those directions. Terrible name. I'm just gonna assume you have not created an entertainment area. So to do so, just jump right into the regular Hue app. Once in the app, select settings on the bottom right tab, then select entertainment areas, and then create entertainment area. Then you'll be prompted to select all the lights you wanna control, up to 10. Once you've selected your up to 10 lights, you'll be directed to a slick interface where you can drag lights around and correctly position them. So the Hue app gives you the TV and seating area as reference. So beyond moving the light in front of the TV or in back or left or right, 
you also have the option to change the height of the light. So by repeatedly tapping the icon, you can change it from ceiling height to TV height to ground height. As you're dragging the light icon, that light in real life will start to blink. This is confirmation that you're moving the light you want to. Once you're done dragging the light, it'll turn green as confirmation that it's been positioned. When all the lights are where you want them, there will be this over the top sequence to confirm that all the lights are where you think they are. But after that, you have a fresh new entertainment area. Okay, so we have our hardware hooked up and we have our entertainment area. Now we need to get this box talking to the bridge. This is no problem, just open up the new Hue Sync app. Let the app know you've already hooked this up. Um, go through the T's and C's, always T's and C's. Find your network, type in the password. When the box is found, you'll be asked to press this button here until it turns green. Once you establish a connection, you'll have to go to the bridge and confirm, but after that, you are ready for some epic sync sessions. Finally, we are all set up. How do we get those lights moving? Open the Hue Sync app, go to settings, entertainment areas, pick the entertainment area you plan to use, select the sync tab, and smash that green start button. I will admit the light coordination can make for some nice visuals. You can certainly create some ambiance for get togethers or just enjoy a more immersive experience doing whatever you do in front of your TV. You have three modes to choose from, TV, gaming, and music. In each of these modes, you can adjust the light brightness and intensity. Intensity is how much you want the lights to fluctuate. I'm showing you what happens when these settings are at their max. As you can see, the experience really is largely impacted by how dynamic the scene is. In this Mario scene, for instance, where the color palette is mostly stable, beige, khaki, you really just get khaki from the lights. I think that's fine. It's mostly acting as a way to make the scene bigger, I think. Now here in Mario Kart, where the colors are more varied, you do get more action from the lights. Even though there's probably video and music mode, all the light cues are still coming from the audio. It would be nice if Hue could incorporate the colors on the screen or maybe allow the user to select a color palette. I'll let you listen and watch how changing intensity in the Hue Sync app affects the lights. All right, so should you buy this thing? I will say that the functionality it provides is unique, very cool, makes viewing more interactive. For sane, reasonable people, I would suggest just wait for version two. The fact that it does not support DRMs that have been out for over three years is problematic. If the functionality I showed you is just too awesome to wait for and you have a bunch of Hue lights that you wanna get more value out of, I say go ahead and buy it. Maybe you're like me, and so when the new one comes out, you just say, well, maybe the kitchen or the bathroom could be spruced up. I'll just throw the old one in there and buy the new one. That works too. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video. I'll catch you on the next one.